Today on the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast, we are going to conclude a thought that we've been working on all week. Let me warn you right off the bat that you better not doubt or diminish the power of God. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 20. We're going to jump to, into it very quickly today. Before we go any further, though, take one pause and let me encourage you to visit BibleTracksInc.org. BibleTracksInc.org, you can get free resources, a discipleship study, gospel tracks, a bunch of different opportunities for you to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ are at BibleTracksInc.org. We'd love for you to visit our website and find out how you can get free gospel tracks. You don't even have to put your credit card number. You don't have to enter a raffle. You don't have to do any of that stuff. We will print them. We will package them. We will ship them to you completely free. The only work you have to do is you have to go to our website. You can get gospel tracks like A New Birth, Transformed, Freedom and Forgiveness, Does Anyone Care, Divided, Overwhelmed, all of these titles, they are completely free on our website right now. Would you do that for me? BibleTracksInc.org. Now, let's buckle up. We have a lot to get through in the next 12 minutes. 1 Kings chapter number 20. We've looked at the fact that Ben Hadad evil king of Syria. He comes against the people of Israel. And Ahab, who has not yet made some of the massive mistakes that really mark him for who he is, is the king of Israel at this time. And Ahab is given an opportunity to stand up against Ben-Hadad. And at the beginning, he kind of cowards. He kind of is a little bit of a coward. He, he kind of withdraws himself. He rolls over and plays dead. But finally, he grows a backbone. He decides, no, 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 Ben Haydad, you step back. You better be careful. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched, Ben Haydad, as we learned yesterday. And now we find ourselves in 1 Kings chapter number 20. In verse number 22, here's the Bible. what the Bible says. After the people of Israel beat back the Syrians with a great slaughter, verse 22, And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go, strengthen thyself, and mark, and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria, meaning Ben-Hadad, will come up against thee. This guy, Ben-Hadad, he doesn't give up easily. Verse number 23, And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods, now get this here, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore, they were stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they. Now, I've always loved this passage of Scripture because it shows exactly what happens when you doubt and denigrate and diminish God Almighty. You must be very, very careful if you decide to do that to the God of all eternity. And that's what the servants of the king of Syria do. Let's read that again. Let's really wrap our minds around the foolishness that they're spewing out of their mouth. 1 Kings 20, 23. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain. And surely we shall be stronger than they. And do this thing. Uh, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, and number thee an army. They, these are the servants, the, the ex so-called experts, the advisors to the king of Syria. And, the, and number thee an army, like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse, and chariot for chariot, and we will fight against them in the plain. And surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice and did so. Have you ever heard about throwing good money after bad? Well, that's what the servants of the king of Syria just advised him to do. He said, I, I know you lost everything going up, up against the people of God, of Jehovah God, but here's what we're going to do. You just lost an army and you barely escaped with your own life. But you know what, king? Here's what we think you should do. Here's the foolish advice. Number the army exactly the same as what you just lost. And here's the problem, king. 
their gods, and they said gods because they didn't really understand the fact that they serve, the people of Israel, they serve the God, singular of gods, the one who is above all, in all, over all. They had no understanding of Jehovah God. They advised him and said with their foolishness, with their complete lack of understanding, they said they're gods. You see, King, the reason we lost was their gods. Their gods are gods of the hills. And we serve a God of the plains. Our gods, they're better suited to flat land. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw them out and we'll fight them on our territory. Now, that sounds like a great idea until you realize that God Almighty created the hills, he created the plains, he created the oceans, he created the mountains, he created the rivers, he created you and me and everything around us. It doesn't matter where you try to fight Jehovah God, you are going to lose. But the servants of the king of Syria did not know that. Verse number 26, and it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel, and the children of Israel were numbered, and were all present, and went against them, and the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids, but the Syrians filled the country. I love the imagery that God uses here, like two little flocks uh, of, of, of just little goats, of little sheep, just two little little uh, pockets of resistance. They don't number much. They don't look like much. And the Syrians filled the country. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because... I almost titled the entire thought and the theme and message today that singular word, because. I just love that thought. We're going to stick with this idea of don't doubt or diminish God. But here's what this prophet said. Because the Syrians have said, the Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore, will I deliver all all this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. See, here's the issue. When you doubt or diminish the power of God, every once in a while, you tick him off enough and you annoy the God of all eternity enough that he says, you know what? You doubt me. You diminish me. You denigrate me. You put me down. I might just have to show you how powerful I actually am. And that's what happened to the Syrians. They were foolish enough to say, oh, their, their God can't handle us on the plains. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the hills, they'll do a good job. But here we are now, two little flocks of sheep like the Bible describes them. The Syrians fill the land, but the prophet said, because. Verse number 29, And they pitched one over against the other seven days, and so it was that in the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel slew of the Syrians an hundred thousand footmen in one day. Let me run that by you one more time. The children of Israel, those two little companies that just looked like a flock of sheep, and the Syrians filled all the land, obviously, that 100,000 people. Have you ever seen 100,000 people all together at one time? Well, the Israelites' sword arms were tired from all the slaying that they ended up doing. The Bible says in verse 29, the people of Israel, the children of Israel, slew of the Syrians and 100,000 footmen in one day, all because, to a large degree, a few foolish servants had to shoot their mouth off and say, their God can't handle us in the plains. And God said, oh yeah, really? Is that so? Let me show you what I can do. But the bad day for the Syrians doesn't end there. Let's look at verse number 30 of 1 Kings 20. But the rest fled to Aphek into the city, and there a wall fell upon 20 and 7,000 of the men that were left. So, verse 29, 100,000 footmen die in one day, and later on, 20 and 7,000 of the men that were left. And Ben-Hadad, we're in the second half of verse 30, and Ben-Hadad fled and came into the city into an inner chamber, and his servants said, Said unto him, Behold, now we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins and ropes upon our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Peradventure, he will save thy life. 
So Ben Hadad goes from thinking he's the biggest and baddest and the bully of the bunch back in verse number, let's see, verse number 9 and 10 and 11, and Ahab has a great comeback for him. He tells him, don't count your chickens before they're hatched or something to that effect. And now Ben Hadad, after he already lost once, comes back with the exact same size army. And the Bible tells us that the Israelites are like two little flocks of sheep, little kids, and then the Syrians fill up the entire entire land, and Ben-Hadad gets whooped again. Now, that's a little bit embarrassing, don't you think, for Ben-Hadad? Well, can I advise you this? In your life, in our life, I would be very careful about doubting or diminishing or denigrating our God, Jehovah God. Now, in just a moment, we're going to close this program and this week of programs down with a song entitled, Blessed Be the Name, brought to you by BibleTruthMusic.com. But this song, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. I hope that's what you do with the name of our God. I hope you don't doubt God, both personally, professionally, in your ministry. Do you realize that God has so much control of your life, and we have so little? little, and we need to be cognizant. We need to be thoughtful of that. So listen to this song as we close out the program. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day for his glory. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him. <music>